Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. Let's get started. Long before the oscilloscope, there was the oscillograph. And that's what this is. Now, somebody's done some extensive modifications to this. They've taken the CRT out, put a larger CRT in, and given it a cardboard bezel. And uh, I'm sure this has lots of stories to tell. So most of you that have seen these are probably familiar with the RCA version. This is the General Electric version. And at first I'm thinking, you know, did somebody just put a G symbol on here? But a closer look at the back has the actual model on it. I don't know if you can see this. Let's try and zoom on into this with uh, a little bit less clutter here. Zoom on in. TMV 175A, Canadian General Electric Company, and it's a real number. So serial number 105, so maybe this is the 105th one made. So let's open this thing up and take a look inside and see if it still works. Maybe we can actually power it up and get a trace. Who knows? Let's find out. To get this apart, there is screws around the perimeter and then the back should just slide off. So what I'll do is I will take out all of the screws. All right, I don't want to tip this thing on its face because of the glass CRT, so I think what I'll do is I'll just try and pull this apart carefully, if it'll come apart. And it feels like it's trying. Haha, -ha. okay. So the cord goes through this little hole in the back here, so in order to remove, boy, does that ever have a vintage electronic smell coming out of there? Wow. So I'll move this forward. Like so, and it looks like from this point, it's pretty close to original. These caps and everything squished down. Look at how that squished down there. Actually rippling the case. Looks very close to original inside. It just looks like somebody's gotten a bit interesting with the CRT. It's an interesting little cap. The two sides here, probably deflection plates or something running through the side here. Wow, very nice. Boy, does it ever have that vintage electronic smell going on. Oh yeah, this is definitely all original. Look at this. Definitely spend some time recapping this. So I'm holding the back up so it doesn't lay down on the tubes. So what I'm going to do is I'll move this out of the way and I'll reposition this and we'll take a closer look at this. There's some interesting workmanship right there, huh? Yikes. All right, I've got this positioned, and as I was about to say before I completely removed this back and got overwhelmed by the vintage electronics aroma, the back has got a very uh, small hole there where the line cord runs through, right down here. And in order to completely remove the back from something like this, you have to remove the line cord. So some of these older units were like that. That's a nice, interesting little right right there. The General Electric. Right down here. So I can immediately see a uh, burnt resistor right here. It's very burnt. Everything else looks to be relatively intact. All of the original capacitors are all in here. Another cap right here. All of the uh, bed style resistors, so body and dot is the way that you read these. So you go by the color of the body and then the end and then the dot. So, to give you an example, here's a large one over here with a more common value. So, it goes body, which is brown, one, end, which is black, which is zero, and then the dot is a multiplier, so orange is three, so you can add another three zeros to it, and that's just a tolerance right there. So, one, zero, 
10,000.000, that's 10,000 ohms, and that silver dot right there means that it's a 10% tolerance, so body and dot. Relatively easy to read. This one here, they actually put a tolerance on. It's not very common that you actually see a tolerance on these older style resistors, but in this case, there seems to be. So they are uh, pulling out all the stops on this one. Let's see here. Yeah, this one here is very cooked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my isolation transformer and current limited variac supply, and I'm going to bring this thing up very slowly and let's see if we have any life in this thing. And yeah, I really doubt that these old caps are still working, but uh, if there's anything wrong with it, of course, it'll just current limit, so I won't hurt anything. Eventually, this will be a restoration. I'll go through this thing and restore it and uh, bring the whole thing back to the way it used to be. I may even have a factory bezel for this thing. So I might be able to put the correct CRT in this and all that stuff. I just got to go looking through my stuff. All right, I'll be right back. All right, let's experience this together. So what do you think it's going to do? Will it come to life or will it make smoke? Let's find out. So plug this in here. I guess you can't see this. It's just right outside the shot here. This thing is too big to fit in. So I'll turn this on. Right now it's in current limit, so it's going through the dim bulbs here. So I'll turn this on. So that just means I have power applied here. And what I'm going to do is turn up the Variac. And I should see these dimly glow. And there they are. They're starting to glow. So I'll just let this sit here for just a moment and slowly bring those caps up in there. So what I'll do is I'll be back in just a moment here. I'll, I'll just skip this part. So I'm going to let it sit like this for about 10 minutes. All right. And then when I come back, we'll turn this up. All right, about 10 minutes has passed. I'll turn this up. Oh, and by the way, I made sure that the on switch was on before I started this. So I made sure that uh, the thing was at least turned on. Just kind of sit everything to somewhat the center portion. So that might look bright in the camera. It is a little bit, you know, I wouldn't say crazy bright. But uh, you can compare the brightness of this bulb. This is a normal incandescent bulb to these, so you can tell that the, the actual glow is a little bit different. It's not really bright. It is um, a little bit brighter than I would normally see, but this is probably drawing a bit of current. And I just turned the intensity up, and I can see some movement on the corner of the CRT here. See that? There is movement, so it is coming to life. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let it sit like this, for another 10 minutes. It's still current limited through these bulbs, so it's receiving less line voltage as well. So I'll just let things stabilize here, and hopefully in 10 minutes when I come back, it's still alive and these aren't fully lit. If so, I can move this over and get this more into the center, and we'll take a closer look and see if we can actually get something readable out of this. Maybe we can even feed it with a signal. The cell graph has been basting on my bench for about 10 minutes, and there is still life on the CRT, which is a good sign. So that's probably just looking at its own problems, and we'll see if we can add to that. Maybe we can mix some signals into that and add to the problems, who knows. So for those of you that aren't familiar with the setup and something like this, I'll talk a little bit more about this here in just a bit. This here is a power transformer, so the AC comes in the line cord, goes into the power transformer, it gets stepped up and stepped down. So the filaments in these tubes run at 6.3 volts, so it has a winding in here that steps the line voltage down to 6.3 just to light the tubes up. All right, and This one has its own separate winding. It's a, usually a 5 volt winding for a rectifier like this. Now, the reason it has to be its own separate winding is because there's also high voltage as well as AC on this tube right here. So there's a winding in here that takes the 120 and also steps it way up. And it takes that higher voltage and it rectifies it, turns it into DC. And then that DC is present on that AC filament winding. So it runs from here into some filter capacitors. And then that's the power supply for this entire scope. So there's filter caps under here, you know, filtering off the, you know, the ripple and things like that. So there'll be two tubes, one for the vertical and one for the horizontal amplifier. And that's most likely going to be this tube and this tube. Which one is vertical and horizontal? I haven't looked at, at that yet. I can probably tell just by grabbing the insulation on the lead and it'll probably impose some signal so some amplitude on the screen I'll find that out and this is a very common tube used in a time base right here which is an 885 which is an oscillator tube and that gives us our, our time base 
very, very simple setup. So this is well before they had graticules on the front of, you know, CRTs and things like that. You were pretty much just interested in using this to look at signals and peeking things up. And a lot of people look at this and they say, oh, what's that good for? Well, actually, you can do modern troubleshooting with these things, no problem. And it's actually kind of fun. Once the newer, more modern scopes get really boring to you, you'll probably go, hey, you know, I want to try working on one of these older scopes and using them, it adds more of a challenge to the troubleshooting procedure. So once troubleshooting and fixing electronics and all that stuff becomes, I guess, second nature to you, you start looking at other pieces of test equipment to make the troubleshooting more challenging. Does that make any more sense? So that uh, might give you a clue as to why I have so much older test equipment. All right, so let's take a look at this. Okay, so I can't really lean this back because there's nothing to lean this on, so I'll just hold this right here on the metal face. So I have the intensity to its max. Let's see what we can do with the centering. Is the centering going to do anything? Oh, yeah, it does a little. And let's see, this one here is going to move anything. Oh, there we go. Get it into the center of the screen. Focus, any type of focus. Uh, that'll be it. No astig on this. RR. Okay, so timing on. Horizontal amp on, and then this timing. So this would most likely just be uh, the horizontal amplifier, and then this would be with the time base. And then we have the vertical amp is on. This is vertical amp off. That's interesting. So actually, we get more amplitude with it off than on. And gain. It is doing something. See that? This is probably looking at its own ripple. It's very crusty control. Frequency. It is varying the frequency, so the time base is working okay. Sync, it is affecting it as well. Let's see if we can let me sync it to itself. Oh, come on. So maybe more gain. Yeah, it's more gain. Let's see if we can get some sync action, see if we can sync it to itself. Will it happen? It looks like it's trying. Let's try this. Now, it is trying as I move it. You can see it kind of steady up. So if I do this and get it a little closer, all right, see if I can make it stop. It is trying to sink. Might go this way. It is trying, but not very well. Obviously, caps and resistors, right? Put this back here and try and slow things up. Multiple things going on in there. There we go. So will this stop it? If we get closer to it, look at how it's affecting the actual... See, it is, it is working, just very poorly. Okay, so what I'll do now, because it, we at least have some life here, is I will get my audio signal generator and let's give it some vertical. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this by the cardboard here because I'm not going to touch the uh, vertical here and hold the chassis at the same time. Oh, it is working. See that? We have vertical deflection. Hard to believe this thing is even working. All right, I'll go get another signal and uh, let's uh, mix some signals here. Okay, I have some audio attached to these leads right here. So... I will grab a resistor, just a random one off the bench. Uh, this one here is 82K. So what I will do, see that resistor right there? So I can't clip anything to the actual binding posts on this thing, right? Because it's let's move this back like so, so you can see what I'm doing here. Can't clip anything to these. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna put a resistor in here and that'll allow me to clip to the legs of this resistor. How about that? 82K is a high enough resistance that I don't even need to think about it. So I can just clip the signal generator across there. There. So what I've done is I just put that across the two terminals here. Hopefully you can see that. Not so much glare on it. So I'll grab, I'll turn the gain down. So I'll turn this down. I'll grab these. So I'm gonna put this down. I'll move this back and I'll show you what I'm doing here. Maybe I can actually prop this up. This 
roll of solder under here. So what I'll do is I will just clip the common of my signal generator there and put this on here. Okay, so there, now I've got this attached. And let's hold this here. Okay, I'll turn the gain up and see what happens. And I got something mixing in here. All sorts of interesting looking things going on on there. So it is mixing that other signal in there. Let's see if I can make anything a little bit more interesting looking here. Well, that's interesting. There we go. So you can see we're definitely mixing a bunch of signals in here. We have a slower moving signal and a faster moving signal. So there we have it. And of course, you know, the ripple in this thing is going to be pretty incredible. And we can lock that like so. So it is working. The sync is working. What we're seeing here is most likely the ripple off the power supply in this thing because, well, of course, you know, the caps are all original. So at this point, I imagine there isn't a whole lot of capacity. So let's see here. You got some very interesting looking displays out of this. Be good for some sci-fi movie or something like that. So in order to get this thing working right again, of course, it just needs to be recapped. And that one resistor uh, needs to be replaced, that one that's very burnt. And chances are the reason that that resistor is burnt is probably from a bad cap. Go figure, right? So now on the screen, what you're seeing uh, looks a lot brighter than what's on this end. This is actually very dim, and this is at full intensity. Now, I haven't put this through. This is still running through the dim bulbs here, and what I can do is I'll put this down, like so. And as you can see, even just flexing the chassis affects this thing, right? So, even just, yeah, just, so what I'll do is I'll flip this to through and see what happens here. So yeah, I definitely get a lot more brightness. I can turn the CRT down. So the CRT is good. Definitely a, a decent CRT, right? So this has got really old caps in it. And I'm just going to turn this down again because I really don't want to put any stress on any of the other components like the transformer here. Here's a quick look at the vertical amplifier when it's off. So when I turn the vertical amplifier off, there is really no gain control after this. So it's directly from the signal generator directly into the vertical plates of the CRT here. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll shut this off. And if I adjust this, as you can see, we can actually get a readable signal. You can see a faster moving signal behind and a slower moving signal right here. So this can actually still be used to troubleshoot even in its compromised condition right here. So it would add an all new dimension to troubleshooting using it like this. But, um, you know, if you're up for a challenge, you could definitely do that. You know me. So what I'll do is I will turn down the amplitude of the signal generator here and you'll see the amplitude go away and you'll see it come back. So it's, you know, reading amplitude well. And if you really wanted to fiddle with this, you could see if something's oscillating. You know, of course, once this thing is rebuilt, it'll be a completely different piece of equipment. But you know, if you were stuck and you needed something to troubleshoot with, you could actually still troubleshoot with this, which would actually be a lot of fun. You know what? That might actually be a neat video. Uh, I can demonstrate troubleshooting something that's compromised, so a broken piece of equipment with a compromised piece of test equipment. If you're interested in seeing that, you can let me know below. And uh, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll just put this thing back together and we'll troubleshoot something with this. I'll give you an example of how that's done. So at any rate, this is going to be a rebuild coming in the future, so I'll restore this thing and I'll take you guys all along for the adventure. It should be a lot of fun. Right now I'm working on another very neat restoration, which should be up not long from now. So definitely uh, stay tuned. It's a pretty neat restoration coming up. Lots of time put into that. If you're enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be many more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. If you'd like to be notified as soon as I post a new video, don't forget to tap that bell symbol.
If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll also pin the link at the top of the comments section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.